Thank you for your invitation. I'm very honored to be among yours. I'm sorry if my English speaking is not very good for you. I, I can understand you, can, you are a bit uh, uh, tired at the end of the day. Um, anyway, uh, I think that uh, uh, education is surely uh, a human right, and uh, that's perhaps what you, why you invited me today. Uh, we can say that worldwide, a lot of international organizations are working today to extend this right of education to some important part uh, of the human king. So, um, uh, in, in, uh, in Europe, the right of education was affirmed by a promise, a promise of equality of access to education for all. And since at least the project of enlightenment inherited from philosophies like Diderot, Voltaire, or Kant for, for Germany, and this humanistic project was linked to an ideal of justice, a universi universalistic education would allow emancipation and access to better social positions, independently of birth conditions on social, ethnic, religious background. During the last decade, this ideal of justice was institutionalized through the creation and the extension of the comprehensive school. An education provision equal for all, combined with a guidance according to merit and independent from social background. And this promise was extended to higher education, while condition of, of access was enlarged to working class and minority students. However, this equalization of access did not fulfill all its promises. Inequalities remained. The gap between middle class and minority students increased. Inequalities between boys and girls are also very important. Education systems are characterized today by early school leaving and dropouts without qualification. Um, some students met difficulties to master basic skills in numeracy and literacy. Even if the comprehensive schools faced important reforms on behalf uh, uh, of equity and effectiveness, particularly through uh, school choice, accountability, diversification of provision, inclusive education, uh, 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 inequalities have not disappeared. A lot of researchers and experts today agree that the first age of schooling are extremely important to develop adult skills and to get better opportunities on the labor market. This is why a lot of countries are currently developing childhood education. But all these efforts remain limited. Education policies do not take really into account the fact that the world has changed. Globalization accelerated exchanges and mobility for people. The development of ICTs on internet increased the possibilities of knowledge dissemination and appropriation. Societies become more liberal and multicultural. The state has been criticized for its lack of effectiveness and efficiency. And people have changed too. They want more autonomy, but at the same time, they want more security. They are more reflexive and critical in their thoughts and actions. They accept less and less unfairness. They don't recognize any more traditional institution like the family, the school, the church, political parties, and trade unions. They express a strong demand of recognition on ethnic on, or cultural differences. Though the sense of justice is today different compared to a few decades ago. Not everything is expected from the state, except perhaps in France, which remain a cultural exception. Citizens claim new rights for gender, ethnicity, culture, sustainable development, 
They want to be listened to. They want to be respected and to better be represented in the political area. They want a better quality education for them and their children. They want to communicate without limitation on the internet. However, this change of justice is not completely recognized by the educative states. The educative state remains traditional in its governance and modes of representation. The civil society is not very active in schools. The separation between the public and the private is strong. Education policy is frequently governed according to some principles of redistribution and efficiency, but it's not much concerned by innovation, by creativity, by cultural skills, by the dissemination of knowledge, by the networking of schools, by the well-being of children. So a tension remains between the principle of justice claimed by the society and the principle of justice claimed by the states on behalf of a conception of equality and citizenship, which is more and more challenged. Indeed, promise of equality and citizenship have not been fulfilled and social and cultural inequalities are huge in the society. And this society does not more trust in schools, and it is more and more fragile each day. So lifelong learning represents a great hope. It is an old idea which was formulated since the 70s, but it is today considered seriously as an alternative by the European Commission. It is quite a simple idea. Everybody who has failed during the, his initial schooling has a right to get a second chance for training when he becomes adult. This sense of justice has at least three features. Lifelong learning is not linked does not link the career of an individual to his initial diploma, but it allows him to valorize knowledge and skills in regard to his social and professional experience and learning as an adult. It allows him to access to better social positions and to participate in the circulation of elites. Lifelong learning affirms the possibilities of choice and autonomy for people according to a main principle of learning. The one who makes errors can correct them during his entire life. So instead of reinforcing social determinism in schools, this conception of justice aims to promote the intelligence of human beings from the cradle to the grave. And lifelong learning allows to update knowledge and skills and to adapt this knowledge and skills regularly to the evolution of the labor market and to technology. It gives a chance to maintain good conditions of employability and to get security in working situation, requiring more flexibility and mobility. The European Commission has been very active since the launch of the Lisbon strategy in the development of the open method of coordination, in the implementation of the European framework of key competencies, in the creation of the European framework of qualification and certification. These transformations embeds another conception of justice focused particularly on the youth on women without qualification. Of course, the European policy of lifelong learning raised a lot of challenges for education systems. For example, adult education is well developed in Scandinavian countries, but less in South European countries. Vocational training on higher education systems are very loose coupled. Resistances, conservatism, corporatism are also very important. So the implementation of a lifelong learning policy needs long term and sustainable restructuration of education and training institutions 
to adjust their provisions. The policy of lifelong learning is full of promises of autonomy and emancipation, but uncertainties remain for the future and for the lifelong learner. How to ensure that lifelong learning will not be a too heavy workload for the learner by transferring the responsibility of the state towards people investing in their own education. The risk would be to strengthen inequalities instead of fighting against them. A new and fair mechanism of solidarity on redistribution has to be invented to allow disadvantaged people to access to training. As we can observe today, further training is more profitable for executives than for workers. The second question is how to balance work time and private time during training to avoid additional stress on burnouts in organization. How to balance seat-based training in a learning organization which should be better adjusted to work time on outside training in more formal institutions. How to articulate the management of human resources on the management of further training. Third question, how to provide a coherent on lifelong learning when providers are not working together. The challenge is to revive the organization on cooperation between education and training institutions, and particularly at the university, which would become the place to offer new means of provision in professional training on adult education. What is at stake is to shift from traditional training focused on the transmission of contents to continuous professional development focused on support and care after the learner. I'm handing with the case of the university. And you have probably understood that I was also concerned by this evolution as an academic. For me, the promise of lifelong learning offers some opportunities to revisit the condition of the academic work, to go beyond the traditional functions of teaching and research. The challenge is to explore the ways of the third mission, particularly the service to the community, but also to explore other missions which enhance the sense of innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship which should be at the core of the academic work. Thank you very much. Thank you.